All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we want to welcome you to Focus on Liberia. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to our broadcast. Today is Saturday, and this is a spotlight, that is FOL Spotlight. Focus on Liberia Spotlight is our program. We try to throw the spotlight on one of our own, somebody in our community doing something extraordinary, somebody being a good example in our community. And for the good news, we got one for you. His name is Emmanuel Savage. This brother, my partner, will tell you something about him being in the wilderness. He is the Bible guy, so he will tell you that story. But what I want to tell you is he is an advocate, and he has been that voice for the establishment of the Work and Economic Crime Court. And in his advocacy, he has not been shouting away from throwing punches on both sides who, in his opinion, should be taking decisions that will lead to the realizations of the War and Economic Crime Court. Emmanuel is here to tell his story about his journey in this advocacy for the War and Economic Crime Court. I'm also in here co-hosting with my partner, Dennis Jai. Dennis Emmanuel is in the house. He has been on this road. Here we are. Are you ready? Mr. Savi, we want to say welcome to Focus on Liberia for maybe the third or fourth time. We're glad to have you. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate being here. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining us from any part of the world, this is Focus on Liberia. We're going to get into a conversation with Mr. Savis. He, as I described him, as being the John the Baptist, like John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Here comes Mr. Emmanuel Savis saying, war and economic crimes called for the victims of war in Liberia and their families. And so we have him, elections have just been held, bringing to the uh, House of uh, Representatives and also the Senate fresh new legs. And see, we want to see what has been his uh, his up his, his uh, game plan, what he's been doing when it comes to the war and economic crimes court, and what is the future owing to the elections of new officers or new uh, legislators and also representatives. We're also looking at 2023. What's in the pipeline for WECC, or is Mr. Service just wasting his time? So we have him right here in studio so that we can have this chat. Once again, I want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. My name is Dennis Jha, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Mr. Savis, what yes, is sir. Loja? Yeah, Loja, Liberians United for Justice and Accountability. <laughs> Mr. Sia, here is the president and co-founder of Loja, Liberian United for Account uh, Justice and Accountability. We have him, and like, let's ask him all the questions. Dennis, thank you. And I, like you, have been following Emmanuel's advocacy. He has been a leader in our community. He has traveled to Liberia many times in his quest to seek justice uh, for the victims of war and economic crimes that were perpetrated against our fellow Liberians. He has his own personal story about this war that took place in our country, just like many of us. And Emmanuel, like you said, is that lone voice in the wilderness, like John the Baptist, crying and saying, justice will reign in the land. And then as you are a Bible guy, I thought you were going to go further on this Bible thing. You know, they, they, I think God was talking about how the Bible says something about when there's justice in the land. I don't know. But let's get started, Emmanuel. I'm so excited. Uh, this is where you need to be for us to talk about the issue of, you know, war and economic crime. Because we can't welcome you enough. Uh, he is the chairman of Loja, the Liberia United for Justice and Accountability. Brother Emmanuel, excellent job there with that leadership. Again, welcome. So tell us a little bit of Loja. <clears throat> so Loja has been established back in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, Loja is L-U-J for short. Uh, that's the acronym for Liberians United for Justice and Accountability. Uh, LOGET is the organization that wants to make sure that uh, uh, justice and accountability uh, return to the Republic of Liberia. We, we are concerned about the civil war, about the 250,000 people that died. Uh, we're concerned about those in leadership now. Uh, so we want to make sure that we fight with all we have uh, to make sure that those people that died 
and even us alive that are victims or see justice during our time. That is the reason why Loja was established and we still stand on that same ground today. Thank you. Imara Savas there, folks in cyberspace. Let's get started here. Uh, hit that share button. In this edition of FOL Spotlight, we will be asking Imara some questions with regard to the war and economic crankle. But we're going to tie everything about around the governance issues in Liberia. We'll first have a uh, war and economic crime code. We'll talk about the elections. We'll talk about political party and the war and economic crime code. We will talk about referendum a little bit, especially the dual citizenship, whether there are any flashbacks when it comes to the war and economic crime code or what took place in our country, Liberia. So Emmanuel, quickly, what is your definition? Because there are some political leaders, when you ask them to tell you what, the war crime code is not defined, everybody has their own definition. So you the advocate, you've been you know, with this thing from day one, what is, your definition of the war and economic crime code for Liberia that you and Loja are advocating for? Well, I think we should specifically uh, target those who have committed crimes uh, mm -hmm. during uh, the Civil War, uh, crimes against humanity, um, economic crimes. We believe those are the reason why Liberia is where it is today. Uh, so I, I don't care if it's called war and economic crimes, quote, we supposed to be a special court uh, to investigate and persecute uh, those people that uh, committed atrocity or whether they're going to be a court somewhere, at least a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, we just want to make sure that these people account for the things they did in Liberia because uh, they are the sole reason for uh, why Liberia is where it is today. And uh, as chairman of Loja, we want to make sure that this happens. But the reason why we refer it to, to it <clears throat> as War and Economic Crimes Code is because of the TRC report. The TRC did call for it, the War and Economic Crimes Code, and by that I think the TRC meant that there should be a special court, you know, assigned to prosecuting these people, and that's why we always refer to it, you know, as War and Economic Crimes Code. But if Liberia decides today that they're going to use the justice system in Liberia and adequately, if it's competent enough, then of course, you know, we're just up for, up for the persecution of these people. Mm. So, so, Mr. Savage, no, <clears throat> normally after the civil conflict, most courts will go after the perpetrators of the war of the crimes of murder and genocide. Why is it that you are including economic crimes? Why? Uh, because if, if you look at Liberia, there are two things you see. You see the war effect, and of course, economic crimes is included. Uh, you see people getting rich, you know, just right off the back of politics. Uh, you see people today are able to build university just by being representative. They're able to build university just by being senator. They're able to build mansions in Liberia. You know, I remember the former speaker of the house, uh, Alex Tala built a huge building down in Marshall. And uh, they have been tied with um, a lot of corruption in Liberia. Uh, so while we looked at the 250,000 that died uh, because of the bullets, rockets, and everything that these people brought to us in Liberia, we should not forget that because of economic crimes, we're missing common medication in the hospital. You know, we don't have paracetamol because of that. We don't have malaria tablet because of that, typhoid. We don't have beds. And, and, and we believe uh, in a statement of, um, of the professor that said that, you know, we die more of economic crimes in Africa than even civil war. So mm -hmm. we have to include that because uh, I think Liberians really died off for economic crimes uh, as compared to the civil war, if not more. Right. Isn't this complicating the whole just fight for justice if you really lump the two together? Uh, so, so the only thing that complicates it is the very players we have in government today, these are the people that we are depending on for policy to persecute uh, themselves. So it makes it very difficult for us and complicate things. So let's say, okay, we're going to take away the economic crime score and, and, and fight for war crime score. It's still as complicated as it is fighting for both. That's why we include the both, because it makes no difference. You still want Prince Johnson's support. You still want George Polly's support. You still want uh, Yekia Koloba's support. Uh, you still want uh, Ahadji G.V. Kroma's support. And so even war crimes code is difficult for politicians because 
They see it like you are breaking bridges with people who supposed to lend you to the presidency. So um, it doesn't matter in Liberia if you distinguish both and go for one at a time. You still feel you still uh, come across the same stumbling block mm. as comparing uh, having both this at the same time. All right, Emmanuel. You know we will get to the details, uh, but let us get an insight about the implementation aspect of it. Um, assuming that is green light, uh, how would you like to see an implementation that you think would deliver the justice that you are advocating for? Well, I, I would like to see people account for the crimes. We'll start first with the TRC. Mm -hmm. uh, the TRC got a really nice document out there, uh, perpetrators uh, that um, uh, get Liberia away it is today, especially the ones acting in Liberia. Uh, the TRC want us to prosecute them. Uh, they want a, a special a court to prosecute them. So I would like to see us, uh, first of all, get these people off our election cycles, get them out of government. That's why Loja want to see in Liberia. It is impossible for anybody in Liberia to believe that these very same people that caused so many atrocity are the one now leading us, are the one we are depending on for policy to improve Liberia. So we, we want to see these people arrested. We want to see them tried. We want to see them prosecuted. And if, if, if you are exonerated by any chance, you know, then we don't have any uh, more right to, to to question your 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 leadership in Liberia or, or even say that you have committed crimes. You know, you 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 go on and vindicated yourself. That's what we want to see. We, we want to see the President of the Republic of Liberia, especially involved with trying to arrest these people. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently we have made it so much difficult for ourselves uh, that we were in the diaspora and uh, a few Liberians in Liberia, especially the ones in politics, decided that we can't focus on that. We should focus on some individual changes and uh, this is not going to do us anything there, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jai and see it's not. So, so Mr. Savis, in a practical sense, how does the code look like? Is it something at the Justice Ministry, at the Temple of Justice? Is it something in Liberia? Is it something in Sierra Leone? Is it something in America? Tell me, walk me through where is it a physical building somewhere in Liberia? Is it something handled by? How do you want to see it? What does what will it look like? I, I wouldn't want to see it in Liberia, to be honest with you. I want to see a Sierra Leone style of persecution for warlords where we, we have a hostess somewhere in the, in the West. Um, uh, we know what happened to the Sierra Leone Civil War and where it was hosted. And the United Nations made it clear to us that uh, if we want to address past crimes, they are more than willing to help, you know, raise money through uh, donors, organization out there to be able to, to prosecute these people. Um, we want international judges. We want a court of competent jurisdiction. We don't trust the very system in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't think we should. If you look on a court just a few days ago, you had Kabina Kabina Janet, one of the men that uh, the TRS is looking for, one of the men Loja is looking for, one of the men every victim is looking for. Uh, he is right on the court, at the Supreme Court there. Now, here you are. Uh, today, we are lucky not to have it, even though people are upset because they think he was booted out democratically. None of my business at that point. I'm just glad he's not in government. I don't think he should be there. Uh, but if we want to see an actual persecution of these individuals, we should not depend on the court in Liberia. Uh, the court is not competent enough uh, to host uh, 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 rebels that commit atrocities to persecute them. They, it's not, it's not like they don't have the capacity. They are just not able to because the court is much more political uh, than we expect. And it's actually under the jurisdiction of the president. And that has been the case of Liberia for many years. Any man where if these individuals, some of whom you just listed, uh, who I think you tried to say uh, bear the greater responsibility for the crimes that were committed, you are advocating that these people shouldn't be allowed to participate in our governor. That by itself, how does it solve the problem, the pains, and the angling victims are going through? It, it helps a lot there, my brother, uh, um, as I see it. It helps because after the Civil War, those who murder our people should not be allowed to participate in government. Uh, that is the reason why we have not been able to persecute these people. 
I would like to address your question by combining it with the question of William King mm -hmm. uh, right here on Facebook about the Accra Peace Accord mm -hmm. uh, that they are saying uh, that they were granted immunity. You know, somehow they, they, they can walk away by killing people. Uh, first of all, Mr. C.A. or Mr. King, these are people that represented themselves. At the time, Liberia needed a temporary peace. They give themselves all of this immunity. They think they can walk away by killing human beings. It, it was not the consent of the Liberian people. Besides, when you look at war crimes, they are crimes beyond our border. It's called international crimes. It means that even countries outside Liberia are capable of stepping in to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. However, they need to work with the Liberian government. Now, the Liberian government don't want to do that. As we know, it has to be the national legislature. Had it been the case and the United Nations recognized that, the United Nations would not have told the George Weir's administration that by 2020 July, which uh, uh, was uh, part of this year in the middle of summer, that they should come up with an appropriate document and strategy in communicating to the world, the United Nations and Liberian people, how they want to address past crimes because of the stress on the war now, or coronavirus are taking place everywhere. Uh, that is why we have not heard a lot about what the United Nations acts of the Liberian government. But to be honest with you, they don't have the authority to decide at any peace accord that they can walk away after killing 250,000 people. They decided that. And, and we as victims want more than that. And let me just say something to my brother there, King. In Sierra Leone, when they met in Cotonou, you can research that, rebels did the same as Liberia. They granted themselves immunity. And uh, at the end of it, all we see what it is. They were persecuted. They were imprisoned. Uh, victims of the civil war in Sierra Leone are much more happier than the ones in Liberia. Mr. Mr. Savis, right now, has, we are having this show. If you send money to your relatives in Liberia, they're not able to get it because there's no money in the bank. If you were on your way from uh, Banga to Banjama, that road is bad. Don't, me, don't let me tell you about going to Maryland. That road is almost impossible. Uh, people are not getting paid. The youth on drug, and we call them Zogo, and uh, four auditors die within eight days. These are problems, these are practical everyday problems that the people are solving. How does a war and economic crime code solve any of these problems, Mr. Savas? Well, it certainly does. So let's talk about economic crimes code. My brother Dennis Koti just said that the economic crimes in Liberia created the war. So the economic crimes is really important. Um, let, let me just go back to the best of best in government in Liberia, where we believe that uh, there are a few people doing better and there are others who are just outright corrupt in Liberia. Let's look at the wage disparity in our country and then look at the budget. And let's think about whether salaries of government officials should be proportional to the budget or whether they should just do what they're doing. Like, for example, the, the legislature determine how much they make and the president signs it because the president also determine uh, how much he makes. Now, what we're missing here in this whole thing is the fact that we think that the national legislature is... Uh, uh, definitely responsible for what they make. Now, if, if we say that about national legislature, it means that the president is also uh, capable of designing what, what he actually makes. And that is exactly what is going on because if I'm the president of the Republic of Liberia, I design the budget along with the executive. And, and I decide whether I want the national legislature to get A, B, or C in the budget. And, and if they are the one to decide themselves, it means the president, because both signatures are on the document and the document becomes law. If you look at it, I'm not trying to tell you about corruption. That's something that we all know about. We can go into and, it And later. you are confusing me because I want straight up how uh, war crime could solve the money issue. And yeah, and that, that's rules. exactly what I'm telling you about now. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. So now you, you, you have these people involved in what we describe a loja as illegal corruption. The reason why we believe that is the case is look at the budget. The budget is $562 million. Look at what today salary harmonization brought to Liberia. According to President We and his team, they have reduced salaries of senators from $20,000 to $12,000. Obviously, it's major. 
we don't have the same money coming in like before. But if you think about the situation in Liberia, you just talk about rules. Now, let's do the math here. Last six years, if you're giving $36 million to the national legislature, 103 people, it means that you have given, uh, hang on, I gotta use my calculator here quickly, $108 million. That's what you've given them in six years, 103 people. Now, if, if you think that is a smart idea to take what belongs to the people and give it to people who are into government for the purpose of passing things that will not be passed if we're actually providing good governance and complete representation, if you think that is the case, then obviously you don't understand our real problem because what we have in Liberia there, uh, 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 Mr. Ja, is the fact that these people are dividing money illegally and calling it something that is again, that is not in the same boat as corruption. Today we have senators owning university. We have senators owning properties in the United States and other parts of the diaspora. Uh, we have representatives doing the same. It, it's because we take much more of the budget and give it to people in government, and then we leave no space for the hospital to benefit, for schools to benefit, for infrastructure to benefit. That's why agriculture sector will, will never rise in Liberia because we don't have nothing to give them. So if you look at what economic crimes court is, it, it looks at the budget itself. That TRC document is so unique it talks about how people were being paid for services that they don't, they, they do not offer. How government was um, uh, bringing people from the diaspora and other parts of the world to serve as consultant and being paid for more than what they have offered Liberia. These are the things that we got to look at: the salary structure and everything in government. You know, at Loja, we believe the government budget and salary should be proportional. And what we see from the budget right now, we don't think a senator deserves more than $3,000 in that budget if we want to be fair to the ordinary people of Liberia. Folks in cyberspace, this is Focus on Liberia. This is our program, FOL Spotlight, a program uh, during which we spotlight one of our own, somebody in the Liberian community who is doing something extraordinary. And today we are identifying Brother Emmanuel Save, who has been more like a lone voice in the wilderness for justice and accountability for victims of the war that took place in Liberia. Emmanuel, why you just explained to me, I captured two things, that there are some people that are standing in the way of the true implementation of the True and Reconciliation Commission's uh, recommendations. Uh, but specifically, I need to hear that clearly from you. Who are those people that are standing in the way of this world crime code for, for justice and accountability. Who are those and why are they doing this? So first of all, is the president of the Republic of Liberia. He's strongly standing uh, in the way of justice and accountability for obvious reason too. The first reason is he wants a certain turn. He gotta keep protecting somebody like Prince Johnson. He gotta protect Ellen Johnson slave. He gotta protect George Bullitt. And the reason is simple. He got hundreds of thousands of votes from these people. Uh, because they have been able to convince their people that they stood for them in many ways and some of them are rich and the voters are poor uh, so people look up to them so the president is targeting ter uh, second term here here's what we just heard uh, the president at the executive mansion somewhere on uh, at the foreign ministry just stated uh, that he's going to sign the, the economic and war crimes code and everybody should uh, go and watch for themselves this is not the first time we've heard this from the president in fact the president was at the united nations in which he delivered a beautiful speech where he wanted victims uh, to, to get justice for what happened in the country. Mm. And, and then he returned to Liberia and then we saw a totally different George Weah started to blast uh, 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 journalists about the war and economic crimes course saying that uh, he's not the one asking for it. He wants development and other people just asking for things that are not necessary. Uh, so the president has been confusing himself. Uh, the president has shown no leadership in this area, so he stands against it. And including his party, as we know, his party actually fight for this. A party really wanted a uh, war and economic crimes code, but it became a political journey. Uh, the reason why the CDC fought for it was because they thought the TRC document would have stopped Ellen Johnson Sirleaf from participating in elections in 2011. And they knew that George Weah would have won the elections 
if uh, Ellen Johnson Solib is not contesting. So they came out and acted like they wanted it. Um, it turns out they don't want it, especially where they're in power right now. You know this history with mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Loja and, and the government, which uh, me personally arrested and fought in Liberia, opposition happy, government officials happy. Uh, so, so the president does not want it. The next mm. person that don't want it is is uh, Buffer Chimmers. Uh, Buffer Chimmers. So the executive CDC and the president obviously don't want it. Buffer Chimmers is the one that should be able to bring this on the floor. We have over 59 signatures in the house, actually over 53 in the house right now that have signed a document for one economic crime score. Right. Just to put it on the floor, the president has communicated to Buffer Chimmers that he should not put that on the floor. Because the president is using this against Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson does not believe in him, just, just so we all know. Prince Johnson knows who the president is. But he uses that against Prince Johnson to scare Prince Johnson. You know, and, and he's going to use it to get Neymar County in the next election. He's going to use it for Grand Jeter in the next elections. So they don't want it. But let's go to individuals who we think want it. Mr. Sabe, let's stay on the president a little bit. Okay. Because uh, before traveling to the UN General Assembly, uh, September 12, 2019, this is what he wrote to the legislature. I do hereby call on the legislature to advise and provide guidance on all legislative and other necessary measures towards the implementation of the TROC, including the establishment of a war and economic crimes court. And we saw that when he stood before the General Assembly, he said, Long after the guns have been silenced and the survivors have to live with the collateral damage of the war, wounded and shot off families, the displaced population, the resettlement of refugees, and all the other negative consequences of national social economic fabric that has been torn apart. Basically, the president is in favor of it, right? And or has you agreed, or 51 or 53 lawmakers signed this resolution. Mm -hmm. So why will you go back to the president and blame him as the one stopping it? Why not? put that solely on the legislators? Because that's what it appears. It appears like the president has written the national legislature asking to be advised. Um, why should the president need any advice for justice? I ask myself, these are political rhetorics that the president come out with, and he knows that those that serve in the national legislature, whether you're part of the CPP or the CDC, or you're independent uh, or at the level of the national legislature, you all understand the politics. Look. The policy, the policy and politics is in a burble. Mm -hmm. All these guys work in this burble. All of them just pretend to be part of different political parties. They don't come with any ideas. They come with the fact that they can criticize the main power. They can get to where the man wants to be. Look, Charles Taylor left that country 17 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. And he said, if I'm the problem, I'm going to step aside. And sooner or later, you know that I'm not. The problem in Liberia is a system. And the system is what confuses a lot of people. That they believe when you replace the CDC with the LP, things get better. Or you replace the LP with the NPP, things get better. Or you replace the UP with the LEC, or just resuscitate those who have made so much blunder in Liberia. Things get better. That is a mistake we've made. The president documented the national legislature in no way acts for the national legislature to hide documents of war and economic crimes. So by now, they should have advised the president. But don't forget, Mr. Jai, we don't want to be fooled. This president work with those in the national legislature. We have seen him pass a stimulus budget of $30 million, where senators from the CPP and other independents disagree on little, but sign earlier and got the abundance from there, and they walked away. So they just disagree with the president for the sake of the media but they are actually supporting the president in everything he wants. If the president really wanted one economic crime score and wanted an advice, why is he not asking now what happens? Up to today, I've not gotten anything. It's just a, a showcase so that he can be able to say, this is what I have done. He's not serious about it. He fought to remove Kabina Jani. He did exactly what needed to be done. If he wants one economic crime score, you know exactly what to do. Yes, mm -hmm. the national legislature is responsible, but I would not take the blame of President Wea because in Liberia, the presidency is very imperial, the power is there, and uh, it would be very unfortunate if President Wea wants to convince us that he's not the problem right now. So who's on your side? You are getting to that point. 
Well, there are a lot of people that are not on our side, and, and a lot of people pretend to be on our side. First, let's start with uh, uh, Rosalind uh, Oswakuko Dennis. She's a representative. She's been championing the cause of war and economic crimes code in Liberia. Many Liberians don't know, but this is a lady that stands tall amongst uh, those uh, guys in the national legislature that don't want it at all. Don't forget the Abu Kese of, of um, Akaros Gray. Uh, today he doesn't want it. He pretend I sat in his office and we had that communication. He said, Emmanuel, we all want justice. But why now? You know, it hurts for people to ask why now. Why when we were crying before, you guys did not cry with us? And I told you, Mr. Jai and Mr. Dennis, I supported the CDC rally for justice and accountability with my cash. Send money to Moba Molu, you know, when they were on the street, you know, toting casket around for justice. The reason I did that was because I know justice is actually needed in Liberia, especially for victims of the civil war. But people don't see the greater picture of what Liberia needs. They think we just need, uh, you know what? Dennis should not be the head of FOL. Let Anthony Sia be, or let Anthony Sia shouldn't be the head of FOL. Let Dennis be, or let Emmanuel take over. They don't understand that it's a system that fix him and be him and be don't fix themselves. These people don't understand it. And, and these are the voters. At the level of the national legislature, the level of those who govern, they do understand it, but a step on the people, that's why they keep them as ignorant as they are, illiterate, and they keep them with all voice, made them poor, and they will continue to do such a thing to Liberia just so that we cannot see daylight for war and economic crime score. Emmanuel, this advocacy has been going on now for years. Government come, government go, and it seems to be that green light is not visible yet. Do you, in this advocacy, sometimes feel that you are alone here? Has that feeling ever come to you? I, I do. I, I do feel, you know, there, there's something that's built in me that says, um, if you feel you're right, doesn't matter how many people think you're wrong, mm -hmm. don't get discouraged. And that's where I am. I'm a personal victim of the civil war. And why, why I say personal is because of what happened in my life. Uh, many of you are victims as well. We cannot underestimate the fact that politics have taken over the Republic of Liberia. You know, what really concerns me the most is us diaspora Liberians and the way we have the power for change in Liberia and we choose not to. Many of us in the diaspora think supporting those people that commit atrocity, supporting bad governance, give us an opportunity to go to Liberia and don't work at all. Just like the people in Liberia are not working at all. We do not build a system by getting lazy people into office. That's not what we need to do. We need a system where electricians are important because they work very hard. Plumbers are important because they work very hard. Laborers are important because they work very hard. You know, these are important. These are the things that build the West. We only want people who talk. So if you can talk like Dennis Jan, or you can talk like Anthony C.A. or Emmanuel Salis, and you can talk about the issues and corruptions and everything, you can be part of the political system and find yourself a job. That is exactly what's been going on in Liberia. And we believe here in the diaspora that we can support discrimination, that we can support overthrowing a president, that we can support elections in which we can get rid of the president, but we think we are solving the problem. And that is what I've said. If opposition really want to fix Liberia, and I'm not depend, they're defending the incompetence of the CDC administration, they will sit with the president and they will outline exactly what we need and look forward to whether the president wants to in, uh, 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 implement these things. But they don't want it themselves because when they take over, they are going to continue the same thing. So the president at his level is doing his, CPP or whatever government is going to come and do the ass. So instead of talking about salaries, they're not going to talk about salaries. Instead of talking about war and economic crimes, because they're not going to talk about it. You have seen elections in which some of these people pretend like they are part of the CPP. And the next thing you look there with other candidates that, that contested against the CPP candidate and they're building some alliance again. You know of some of the alliances they have built. And maybe we'll get into it later. But right. these are the things that I make in the system to struggle because at the end of it all, I refuse to blame actual victims in Liberia that have no voice. 
I blame Anthony C. I blame Dennis Jai. I blame Mano Savis. I blame every one of us that have a voice, especially in the diaspora, that are not using it for justice and accountability. You are on mute, Dennis. Mr. Savis, you keep mentioning about CPP and all. Are you saying uh, because the opposition, we, we understand, as you're saying, that uh, the government is not on your side. You have just, uh, meaning the executive mainly. Are you also saying the opposition political parties are not on your side? Is this becoming hopeless, if that's the case? Well, it's not hopeless because uh, we, we do, like go to the case of the United States, it's, it's a high comparison. It, it took many years to get us where we are today. You know, to, to have you and I in North America, it took the advocacy of great, great people in the world like Martin Luther King. Uh, I think sometimes he felt he was in the wilderness. I think he wasn't supported by the people that he wanted to support him. And um, there are times you hear him saying there's a silence of our people, not just what they're doing to us. Um, I, I express my frustration in so many different ways, yeah. but I believe that one economic crime school will come to Liberia. That message is gonna resonate with people very soon. But, but, but Mr. Sato, why would the opposition not be in favor as you are making me to uh, think that the opposition is, I mean, what would be the reason? Because they're all entrenched in this verbal of politics, into corruption, and into the very war that took place in Liberia. Now, let me give you an example. The opposition were in Liberia when I went there to fight for one economic crime squad and I was arrested. Um, you never heard anything from uh, the CPP or any political party. That's good because, you know, this guy's fighting for one economic crime squad, and that's not what we want. Look at what happened during elections. The CPP supported candidates like Samuel Johnson, you know? Look at what happened. They supported candidates like uh, Brent, Brent, uh, uh, Bernie Samukai. These are things that you're seeing. Look, right now we think the George Weah administration is horrible. I'm telling you right now, the CPP administration will also be very horrible. This will be a government that Liberians will look back and say, this is not what we wanted for solution. We have seen this trend in Liberia before. Look, they, it will be a complicated government. Now, that's the only way to beat George Weah. And if that's the goal, that's the goal. If that's the goal for diaspora Liberian, that's the goal. Because if they go to the elections united, they're gonna be able to win the elections. If they go in this unity, George Weah will become president. So either ways, we don't have hope for justice. We don't have hope for accountability in the next few years, but you never know. As we continue to advocate and they continue to fight among themselves, we might just have a break. If you look on George Weah post recently, President Ellen Johnson Salif apparently tweeted, we later heard that it wasn't her, whatever the case is, the tweet was about uh, the president extravagant showing of the lighting of the executive mansion Christmas light. And uh, uh, she thought a lot of money was spent, people are suffering, people didn't take pay, and uh, you know, it's an affront to these people. Uh, to the annoying of President Weah and his surrogates or handlers, they got together and wrote something about all the crimes President Weah and her children committed. President Salih. Uh, President Salih. And if you look under the post, you, you come back and say, Loja is right. Imana Savis is right. Everybody, including sedition, had a voice that day to say President Weah must have the courage investigate and prosecute, bring war and economic crime school because these same people will go against you tomorrow. And mm -hmm. all of what that was posted just vindicates some of us and our advocacy in Liberia that no matter what we do, if we don't fight for war and economic crime school, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that people swallow the real advocacy because when I read all of the sub posts on the George Weir post, you will see that even surrogates were calling for war crime school. Yeah. Even some are calling for economic crime score. So Liberians well, know this is what we need. They know it very yeah. well. But people are pretending because of the politics and who they support. And that is exactly what it is. And Mr. Savage, that is very hard to believe looking at what you've just said, right? If the president or the ruling CDC is now not in favor, even though they were before, if the political party, especially the CPP, not in favor of war crime court because they are looking at their voters. 
doesn't that tell you that this where the labyrinth people are at the moment that really war crime code is not the way forward? Isn't that the message that is sending? That, that, that's what the is message. it that you alone seeing that nobody else is seeing when it comes yeah, to the that, ruling? That, that, that's the, the message of the politician to the people and they control everything. They got the money, they got everything. That's their message. Why you think, and I, I don't think justice should be on a referendum, but I bet you put one economic crimes code on a, ref, on a referendum and ask Liberians to vote. I bet you Liberians victims will overwhelmingly vote for justice and accountability. In the, even the people in Nima County will vote for it. These are people that understand what Liberia needs, but they will never bring it forward to the ordinary people. They will keep stepping on it. It is not the ordinary people fault that they elected that Prince Johnson. It's the fault of the educator and the system that qualify him to contest in elections in Liberia. In fact, the law states that people like that should be in good standing with the law before they be able to participate. Now, we are saying a murderer is in good standing with the law. That is why Charles Taylor contested. That is why Ahadji G.V. Kruman contested. That is why Prince Johnson contested. And you can name all of them. First of all, we should not have allowed these people to contest elections. But because the politics is a verbal, a verbal where all of them lived and all of them do everything about corruption. And I tell people, none of them part of any different political party. They are all part of the one corruption political party. And that's why you don't see ideas. Look. Every one of them at one point have supported the CDC. The CDC have supported them. They all support each other. It's just a matter of who is in office, who this person can employ, and the rest of the people become opposition. We are not going anywhere until we fix that system. And Emmanuel, what happens if the war on economic crime go never see the light of day? Uh, uh, in Liberia, because the picture you are painting here, there is, you're trying to tell me that Anthony, there's a danger here. Should we not bring closure to these crimes? Yeah. So what will happen if this thing does not happen? And I'm glad you used the word danger. And, and that's exactly where I'm heading. Mm -hmm. Like Liberia is sitting on a time bump. Uh, you, you know, as, I don't know what you've been looking at Liberia a few days. Um, you see the clubs are parked. Mm -hmm. Bars are open. People are enjoying without face masks. Oh, uh, but there's an argument now whether there is coronavirus in Liberia or not. The truth there is. The other truth is we don't care about lives, so people can die, no problem. Now, my point here is, the danger that is in Liberia is the fact that without one economic crime score, we continue to be where we are. People continue to die. People continue to steal. High salary continue to exist. Discrimination, like what they say about people who are taking citizenship in other countries, continue to exist. The native and Congo continue to play the same role. Look, if justice is not implemented in Liberia, we can rest assured that every advocacy will fall for flat. And everyone will use advocacy because that's what it needs for them to be able to uh, get into government. Look at the United Party, for example. With all the blunders they have made, they are now being resuscitated by the collaboration they are in. Tomorrow, the very leaders that corrupt the system may end up taking over. So you find out that they will not leave a space open for anybody who is policy oriented, who wants to come and change things to be a part of their governing system. It's so corrupt. Now, we got blood on the land. 250,000 people died. You know, many Liberians believe in God, believe in the spirit of these people. Many Liberians believe in a lot of things, including the Bible. If we think we can kill 250,000 people and develop Liberia, we lie. Until we can address past crimes, we will never be able to fix that country. And as much as we try, honestly, without recognizing the fact that these people were not sacrificed for a bad Liberia, if they even were sacrificed, it should be for a better Liberia. And if we don't address the fact that these people were murdered because Prince Johnson wanted power, because Charles Taylor wanted power, because Ellen Johnson Sully wanted power, we can fight all we can. The budget remains the same. Mm. And as you can see, for the last eight years, the shoes you buy on your, on your, on your, that to wear on your feet has increased. The glasses you wear increase. The shirt increase. Even your property tax on your mortgage, your rent. Nothing is staying where it was. The Liberian budget stays there for many years. It's not going to go up. Even when it goes up, they keep it there. The rest of the money goes in their pocket. 
because there is no economic crimes. These people can walk away with millions of dollars like Bernie Samuka did, later on convicted by the court, filing a appeal and the claim to go and compete in election. These are the things that will continue to happen if we don't address a war and economic crimes going to Liberia. If we don't have it, we're going to come back to this very same system and complain about the next person we elect. Mr. Savez, uh, when, when uh, Mr. Cummings took over as head of the CPP, we heard that he plays a call to you and you guys talk. Uh, I don't know to what extent that is true or false, but my question here is, your message seemed to, I don't want to use alienate, but you are like, nobody is doing the right thing. To what extent are you trying to uh, persuade these people? Are you trying to uh, uh, talk to CPP, for instance, to buy the product that you are selling? But instead you are saying, oh, you guys are bad. You guys don't want to do this. You guys don't want to do that. To what extent is this too uh, kind of impacting your your call for justice uh, 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 and accountability. You know, yeah. You, you, you see, and, and I like that question then, Mr. Job, because that's what people accuse me of. They say, you, you can just be bashing everybody. You got to work with some people. Now, who do you work with? Do you go to the government and say, let me work with you when the government don't want to work with you? And then when you turn to the CPP, you see what the CPP is doing. They got Ben and I, Uri, they got so many corrupt people in our system. So what do you do at that point? If you're an advocate, you just say, you know what? That's what the system is, let's work with it. That's how we give up. That's how we, we allow the system to take control of us. We don't have to win a debate on the issue of whether both sides are corrupt. Let Facebook win the debate, let the CPP win the debate or the CDC win the debate and let true advocacy fail. If that's what it is, that's what we stand for. We cannot work with people who are corrupt, asking to persecute corruption when they themselves are the ones shooting corruption. Did you try well, to work with Mr. Cummings? Well, I, I, here's where I feel about Mr. Cummings. I, I think Mr. Cummings is a uh, corporate superstar. Uh, I think he's at the level uh, where we find people like George We are in terms of success uh, 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 in Liberia. And even though we know the story of George Weah, I, I, I love Mr. Cummings. I, I actually think that he could have gone to the elections and make a difference. That's what I honestly thought. But now Mr. Cummings is becoming a real Liberian politician. Look at the United States, for example. We don't like Donald Trump, but he did it the other way around. You know, he wasn't that traditional politician, but he was able to sell nationalism uh, to the people of America and they end up voting for him. We, we need a politician that recognize how bad these people that they are collaborating with can affect justice. Now, if Alexander Cummings become president tomorrow, if he's gonna work with Prince Johnson, what are the chances that he's gonna bring economic, I mean, war crimes court in Liberia? Maybe not, because he's got to protect these people that supported him. The same with Ben and I, Is he gonna talk about economic crimes court? Obviously <clears throat> not. So where we are is we are watching the system and I'm telling you right now, from now to 2023, if Liberian politician don't fight for justice and accountability, we're going to re-strategize and start to fight in another way. We are not going to allow politicians to get control of Liberia in which they believe that this generation will not get justice for their families killed. We want to work with politicians, but we don't want to work with the one letting us know that it's not possible. When I spoke to Mr. Cummings, I made it clear to him that as an organization, we prioritize justice. And that's what we want. He gave me the clearer political answer. Emmanuel, that's now, you know, uh, we, we can't talk about this now because you know the Liberian political system is entrenched in a lot of different things. Uh, you are one of those who understand it very well. You know, we, we need to deal with what is at hand and then we'll move on. So what I understand is what is, what is at hand is George Weah. So everybody in the diaspora, like, let's get rid of George Weah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I I'm not going to go in depth with what Mr. Cummings and I discussed. Uh, but the truth is, from what I determined from the conversation, is we are far away from justice under our Cummings administration. We are far away from justice under the George Weah's administration. We are closer to justice if we can fire up the base of the ordinary people that believe that power is inherent in them. That no matter who is president of the Republic of Liberia, we are able to force justice in this country. And Une, if we who in the diaspora believe that we are truly victims and we want justice, 
I believe we will have our effort placed in the right direction. But for now, we are the one responsible for the lack of justice because we are not putting up a fight for these people who are politicians operating under the disguise of trying to fix Liberia while they're destroying everything in Liberia. Mr. Savez, uh, one of the argument, one of the arguments uh, advocated for war crime court have been making is that if the court is established and people prosecuted, it will set a precedent yeah. so that others will be perpetrator will not tread this dangerous path that got us in this hole and we're trying to dig ourselves out. That's the right. argument. Uh, you know, people concern, and I made that argument too, but I have to ask this question, Emmanuel. Yeah. Where in Liberia has there been a precedent set that is preventing people from carrying on crimes in our society, for example, killing? Then there's no a little history about people who were engaged in ritualistic killing in Liberia. And I think it was the Tobot administration that came in and the decision was made against this uh, ritualist. Today, we see it in different forms. Yeah. So the argument that, oh, when we set a precedent, then it will not happen again. Tell me, how is that possible, Imara? You see, you, you can't stop crimes from being committed in countries, uh, mm -hmm. especially in countries like Liberia, where we need serious uh, psychological help. Uh, the insanity in the land is high. You know, after the Civil War, what we've witnessed, we expect people to re re return to normality. We expect people to, to think that that, that everything is okay after watching the parents being killed, watching their families murder. You, you saw what happened. I, I don't need to mention about how we are victims. Um, if you look at what happened in Liberia, you will understand that if we don't address these things, people will continue to do these things. For example, what Ellen Johnson Sully's son has to run away with $10 million for, uh, provided by Chevron. The CDC government accuses the George Weir's, I mean, I mean the, the Ellen Johnson Salib administration of dishing that money to her son. And then we know that she's too afraid and say, you know what, blame it on me, not on my son. Now we allow one man to walk away with $10 million and a lot more money on a no car. And, and we said, it's okay. We don't want to investigate. We don't want to persecute. So George Weir now come and say, okay, well, if, if we didn't do this, I can build my houses. I can build my condominiums, my duplexes in the, in the millions, in the tune of millions. And he's going to get away with it. Because before George we have started that project, Prince Johnson already spent a few million on a project in uh, 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 Nima County, building his own university in his name. Then you got Thomas Fala doing the same. You got Alex Tala. You got someone like Vani Shemo, who is entrenched in other corruption in Liberia. I, I can go on Nimi and Nimi and Nimi and Nimi. Like these people see the fact that we cannot prosecute past crimes as a determinant of what they are doing to us. And that is why I'm sad. It is time that is gonna tell every Liberian that our advocacy is for the best of Liberia. Because every human being that they have put their trust in will let them down. Every human being in Liberia that you elect and think they are up for good governance in Liberia will let you down. It's the system that fix human beings. Human beings don't know how to live in peace. Human beings don't know how to live with views of others. They don't know how to accept at least the majority of human beings. They believe in what they believe in. You can see this on Facebook. When we come in, we have a good debate amongst ourselves. Even the president who was making sense. It's still somebody that people ask to strides and say, go and go sit somewhere. You know, I don't want to listen to you. Liberia problem would never be fixed. Mr. Jai and Mr. Uh, Asi, it, it's going to be actual problem if we don't address war and economic crime scored in Liberia. Mr. Savas and ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing War and Economic Crime Cause, the election referendum and everything in between with Mr. Emmanuel Savis, who's joining us from Canada. And uh, if you want to join the discussion, please call the number on your screen, 605-313-6004. The code is 791403. Let me read two comments here because okay. uh, what you are saying, Mr. Savis, is real. I myself, I'm a victim, but 
I'll put that aside and read from James Tanu. James Tanu appeared on Focus on Liberia to recount his story at some time uh, of, of the war. He's, he, re, he's, he, he writes, they burned those little kids in a blacksmith shop on that day in my presence, including my family. I still don't know how I'm surviving after that day. That's uh, when he, when Mr. Tanu appeared here, we, even the moderators could not hold back our tears. Yeah. What that guy went through. Then Dr. Samuel Ngovo writes, my younger brother and eight others were butchered with machetes with their hands tied behind them in my village of Mojahun, Kolahun district. Taylor fighters were the suspect. War crime court is the answer. I, and uh, not to bore you, my, uh, I too a victim. And this is why the issue of war crime you know, is something that uh, is also very, very crucial. In 1990, with my family, we walked from Morovia to Cotton Tree. In 1992, we walked to Lark. And when I say walk, you are going through rebel lines. So this is no joke. You know what that is. 1996, yeah. we were able to get a car and drove to look at tour to cross into Africa Coast. And the experience is horrible. It took me, you know, how many years? My father was killed by uh, the LPC rebels in Sino County. Up to now, I'm not able to ask my sister how did exactly the daddy die. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been uh, since 1993. I was my, I was able to ask my sister who was in Sino at that time. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, 20 some more years later, and I still could not let her end the story because I just couldn't take it. This is the situation you, we are facing. And uh, you're doing war crime code, which is, is a good thing, but is there any way that your strategy or whatever you are doing is hampering realizing a true war and economic crime code that you see? Is there a way that you think you could have done it better to achieve this? I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't want to you know, sit and pretend like I'm perfect because we are all not perfect. And I think along the way of advocacy, you make some mistakes and you won't own up to it. Uh, but I don't think we're doing anything wrong at this point. I think uh, what, we, what we're doing at the level of Loja is to make sure we do all that is right, to make sure we fight for justice and accountability in a rightful manner, a peaceful manner, and of course, uh, in a democratic manner. And that's what we're doing. We're going to continue doing this. I don't expect this advocacy to jump from the ground, fly to the sky. But like I said to you, Mr. John, we're not just going to sit and be politically inactive and watch these people do these things in Liberia. I'm not going to be part of the 2023 elections in any way possible uh, because we still have a mission where we live. We got kids to raise and our life is away from Liberia. But we're going to work with politicians that want justice and accountability. We're not gonna work with the ones that are faking it. There are a lot of them faking it. We want new breed of Liberians that understand justice and understand accountability. Now, one might say, I think Emmanuel is proceeding wrongly and I've heard this from Louis Smith. Louis Smith is the brother of, of Buffer Chimmers. Uh, Louis Smith saying, uh, Emmanuel, you gotta engage your leaders respectfully if you want war and economic crime score. Uh, the way you're engaging them, uh, it may not want them to entertain you. Oh, look, I'm just one victim. There are many victims in Liberia. Many, many, many victims. Why do you want me to engage the national legislature in a way that I shouldn't? What am I doing? Am I saying, hey, gentlemen, I got gone to your head. You got to bring war and economic crime school. We're fighting for justice and accountability. The president is denying us. Opposition is denying us. Those at the level of the national legislature and the judiciary is denying us. The international community is waiting for them to put their stem on this justice thing to be able to help they don't want to. And people want us to be begging. How do we beg? Uh, but we are not going to sit and remain politically inactive forever. We're going to watch them. 2023 is all they ask. If they don't try, we'll be organizing better Liberians to go into Liberia and fight for justice. Just because it's been delayed doesn't mean it will be denied. Mr. Mr. Savage, Mr. Sia, one second. Let me bring in the caller here. She will join the conversation quickly. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? My name is S.B. Wallace. 
Uh, I'm calling from Toronto, Canada. That's been welcome to Focus on Liberia. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm one of the uh, executives here at Luja. As you guys know, Liberians United for Justice and Accountability. And I saw that my uh, my chairman was on the show, so I just wanted to call in to kind of echo a little bit of what he's you know he's been preaching over the past uh, you know five plus years. You know, you there, there's so many different ways that we can look at the situations in Liberia and. As we've seen, a lot of our, our, our brothers and sisters back home have been entrapped by this whole partisan mentality. I belong to this party, and I belong to this party, and so I'm going to support their agenda, which is fine. You know, we've never, we've never argued on that matter. We've never disputed anyone's uh, allegiance to a particular party. But what we, we have failed our, you know, to do as Liberians, especially those of us back home, is to hold accountable. The people who uh, we have entrusted to, to run the country, to hold them accountable for not doing right by the, the citizens. And we've seen this, the same trend over decades, over decades, have happened, where leaders come into the, you know, into the, the, the political system, do whatever they please, and walk, and walk scot free. So what we here at Luja are saying is, look, we're not going to come out here and, 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 and endorse any particular uh, a politician. But what we're going to do is we're going to continue to fight for justice, justice and accountability that kill over 250,000 people. We're going to fight for justice and accountability that we see currently today where you have party leaders on voice recording, openly admitting to corruption. Openly admitting to illegally, illegally, you know, uh, 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 acquiring resources. Openly admitting to embezzlement. And guess what? These are the same people who are making critical decisions for our country. We have senators, you know, legislators, uh, 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 leaders who participated in the war, who we saw on video committing atrocity against humanity in Liberia. Mm. And yet, these people are the ones who are holding prominent positions in the country. So this is not about partisan. This is not about who we think would be the best president of Liberia. This is about holding people accountable, leaders accountable for the things that they do that affect our country each and every day. And Thank so, you. The, you know, just the, the, the gentleman that asked the question about, about what president, president are in place. You know, there there isn't any. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to start that fundamental initiative mm -hmm. of people for people to understand that when you do decide to run for public office in Liberia, we're gonna watch you, we're gonna applaud you when you do the right thing, we're gonna hold you to high expectation. And mm -hmm. when you don't do the right thing, we're gonna ask that you be brought to face justice. Thank you. And, and Imara, let me let me come in. Uh, thank you, S.B. Wallace, uh, for your contribution there. Emmanuel, uh, this is a big fight. And you know I know it. And it will require a lot of involvement from everybody who believes in it. So let's talk about partnership. I know you mentioned one legislator. You are very sure it's not faking it and you're not sure of others, and you think they might be faking it. Are there other civil society organizations that you are working along with? I don't want to talk about individuals, but institutions that you are, you know, you are in this fight with, because uh, you're doing well, but you, know, you alone can do it. This is a big fight. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And you know, when we started Loja, we started Loja with the intent of bringing ordinary people on board. Mm -hmm. uh, SB Don Wallace, an executive of Loja, just called on the show mm -hmm. and uh, expressed the fact that he wants justice too. Um, you want justice, um, Mr. Chow wants justice, a lot of Liberians want justice. Honestly speaking, looking how entrenched the politics is in Liberia, how corruption has taken over the fabrics of our society, I think our best strategy is to work with ordinary Liberians. 
gradually we'll be able to get a lot of Liberians on board. I, I'm not overlooking this advocacy at all. I'm not in any way thinking that we're failing. I know collaborations and partnerships, they're really good in terms of the advocacy. But who do we collaborate with? Okay, when Dennis Jai and us uh, as an ACA and I collaborate, look, the politics states that we are nothing. That's what they believe. Unless you are in the system fighting, you're nothing. There are advocacy on Facebook and in Liberia that is really bad for Liberia. They are really bad for Liberia. But those are the things that we accept. Our mentor ability in Liberia have dropped. Insanity all over the place. Depression all over the place. We have seen the fact that we need rehabilitation in Liberia. Mm. And we've seen government officials thinking the fact that they want better for our country. Now, where do we go? Now, let's start with the, the religious community. Okay, we need to work with the religious community. Now, you go to a religious community and they're behind T5. They say God sent them to endorse T5 and T5 is going to win elections. What they do you are do not, They are not in him with oil. Well, oil. They, they, they are baptizing him because the really election is to around. These people, they, they want to convince <laughs> us that. Uh, let, me give uh, you, see, let me give you a few names. They are oh, organizations, go ahead. They are organizations here, right? Like yeah. the one that was headed by uh, Ms. Uh, Lovetta Tukwe. You see another organization being headed by the uh, Councilor uh, Verdia. Yes. You know, and even on the ground, you, you have some civil society organizations. I mean, you, you're telling me, and not even all the pastors are at 19T5 and they like. So you still have people on the ground doing extraordinary things. Are you saying yeah. everybody is corrupt and you can't work with them? Well, I'm a self corrupt. Every Liberian is corrupt. I'm not sitting here to justify that some are better than the others, even though I know some people got good reputation than the others. I'm saying let's fix the system so the system can check us. And they don't want to, they want to say, oh, we're going to put trust in Mr. Dennis Jai, and Dennis Jai is going to deliver for us. The president says it's powerful. If you're going to work with all these corrupt people to get there and you think you're going to make decisions on your own, you're lying. There are other people who are de facto president in those kind of collaborations. And that is why we are often to work with ordinary Liberians. Because if we can show up on the street like we did for T5, or we did it for George Weir, or we did for DeLong, if we can show this is what we need, then obviously we are getting serious. And that's why we're saying, let's work with ordinary people. Because those in government, they're not going to help us. They are pretending to, but they won't. But you know, after the Civil War, we have seen one real elections, and that the one in 2011. The one in 2005 was very corrupt. Uh, the one that brought George Weir to power, we've seen another one that we think maybe has a little bit of credibility in it as well. And right after the war, this generation is watching the transition of power from one Liberian to the other. Eventually, we'll get to know. And that's why I'm praying for 2023. And I so do want the CPP to go and win the elections. So our mm -hmm. argument can start to resonate because there'll still be no roads in Monrovia. There'll still be no food for people to eat. There'll still be no hospitals that got medication. There will still be the same problems that we face today, no money in the bank and everything. And then we have to question people. Do you not agree that we need war and economic crime school? That mm -hmm. we need salary reductions? Do you not agree that we need to fix the system? Because right now, everything is tiny. But that doesn't mean that we can't advocate. That doesn't mean that we can't keep reminding them that we are victims, just mm. because we think they are not on our side. And that is why we continue to say what we want to say. That is why we've taken our time to continue to tell people that the war on economic crimes code is necessary for Liberia. For those who think it's not necessary, you can keep doing what you want to do, even if we remain unsuccessful, unsuccessful in the eyes of many, Tomorrow, history will remember us that we have said that we need justice and accountability and every country needs it. And we're proud of the route we have taken. We want to work with ordinary people unless a politician show that they're really interested like Rustling Swarkuko Dennis. We're working with her. How many of them we can work with? Nobody. I met Evan Snow when I went to Liberia. We sat in Evan Snow office and say, Mano, I really want this war in economic crime school because, because I was with Charles Tiller. People think I committed economic crimes and everything, but I, I want you to go to the Equas, you know, file your case there. 
And, and, and I'm like, well, that's a good idea. We actually were thinking about it. Mm. So at the level of Loja, we've discussed that and we wanted to do it. We're supposed to be so doing it. And then the here comes yeah. the, 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 the coronavirus. These are people who believe they have done nothing to Liberia. Yeah. We need well, to go and let them set themselves is... free. Working with them is just complicated. Mm. And we have tried all we can. And I tell you, I can't point out one and say, this one looks like he's on the rise or this one has already got in there and he's going to help us. They don't want to. You know, Thank if you want to get let, to the point, I'm more than willing, but we're not getting there under their administration for sure. Let me bring in a few more callers. Before that, Jackie Sire said, these organizations need to come together and create sustained pressure. The religious leaders are useless as they have all been compromised. I don't yeah. believe they are useless, Jackie. Some of them are. But let me bring in uh, a call. I agree with Jackie. All of them are useless. <laughs> all of them are very useless. I no, agree too. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, let me take a caller here, 901 area code. Uh, your name and where are you calling from? Call up. Four eight nine five. Your name and where you calling from? Let me go to the next caller here. That's uh, our man, Jerome. Jerome Gilman. Jerome, you are live. Thank you very much for allowing me on your show. Uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Same to you, buddy. Uh, Mr. Savage, I've been following you for a while, and admire your courage. I heard that you are hoping that the diasporans will come together and mount pressure, hopefully to bring to bear uh, your cause. But I have a concern. The war for which you are speaking, the crimes for which you are speaking, it was the same diaspora Liberians that raised the millions that brought the war. It was the same diaspora Liberians that came back to run the country. Mm -hmm. They appointed the judges. They appointed the police. Mm -hmm. They have had the people entrenched. And here we are, you are like a lonely voice in this wilderness. The power that be, that has the money, the heavy microphones, the radio stations, the television stations, the newspapers, they were all supporters of the war. They were all yeah. beneficiary of this war. Yeah. By you saying they should be persecuted, you are telling them to persecute themselves. So for some of us that support you, that like what you're doing, give me some hope that you can actually have a court in Liberia. I don't know who's going to sit on this court. Just tell me what do you see as the composition of a true walking academic crime court in Liberia? With I hope you don't have someone like Kabina Jennings, who was also a war crime, a war criminal on that court. Our okay. Liberian Supreme Court is full of them. So how do you do it? Tell me who, how will you compose that court? Do we bring foreign people? How right do you do this? Th thank you. Uh, let me take a few more callers, uh, Emmanuel, and then you can come in. Okay. Let me go back notes. to the uh, caller, 4895. That's the last four digit. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Your name and where are you calling from? Oh, I'm James Borka, calling from Austin, Texas. Uh, just want to uh, thank you for bringing me on your show. Uh, I wouldn't want to recommend the gentleman's service. Uh, I'll put that on the work record. Because you got a bunch of looters and corrupt leader in the government. How can the work record be established? And I heard Prince Johnson saying that if the work record is brought in Liberia, then the Malay is going to defend him. So it's, it's going to be hard. The only way Labro is going to move forward is some of you guys are going to go out there and work in the government. Yeah. Because you can't be out of the situation and speaking out. Savi was arrested all the time. They can see the Yeka Koliba. He's in the government. Long time they have getting rid of him. But that's the politics in Africa today in Liberia. 
You got Luther. Those are supposed to make the laws. They loot in the country. Labrador like one leader. The president is the final man in the country. The war crime code needs to be established with all the establishment that brought one move forward. Thank you. And I just want to thank my brother Stavi for the apple of the and I really recommend a statement. Thank and you. thank you guys for bringing me on the show. Thank you. Let me take two more colors and then we'll come to you. They have so many colors here. This is uh, Dennis Koti. Right. Yes. Oh, thank you for bringing me on, uh, Mr. Ja. And I want to thank all of you. Yeah. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I want to thank all of you and most especially my director, Mr. Savis, for being so eloquent on this subject. People are overlooking it, thinking that it's not going to work. But uh, I am also here to, to throw light on some of these things that you're saying. There was one critical question that came out. People say, why will you uh, attach the economic crime court with the war crime court? Why they can't be separated? Uh, actually, <clears throat> the fact that the war crimes were committed uh, as a result of the economic crime. Mm -hmm. If let's go back a little bit, um, Samuel Doe came into power on the same economic crime that was being that were being committed earlier, and then suppressing the rest of the the, the, the people. And this is what brought Samuel Doe into power. Now he paid this year to it to actually implement what he came into power for. Mm -hmm. I think when he came into power, the 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 world was they say rampant corruption, misuse of public offices, and human rights abuses. Those were the three major sentences or uh, major phrases that I can remember. Now, <clears throat> this same thing continues all of the way. And this is what brought, if you can remember, this is exactly what brought the war uh, to Liberia. Now we cannot do away with uh, economic crimes code and say we're doing only war crimes. And to answer some of those questions, like the, the second to the last speaker asked that, well, it was the diaspora or Liberians that raised the money to fight the war. Let me say this. I will agree with you, but the TRC report that we are actually fighting for it to be implemented over there directly accused or gave us names of people who committed the highest atrocity in the country. We would have considered this thing to be, okay, you know what? That was just sacrifice for the country. But then the very people went there again and started doing the identical thing, the identical stealing or economic crimes. Just need me. It is just too much. Thank you. So um, my people, you'll be convinced that war and economic crimes court will be established for Liberians. If it cannot be established in Liberia, it will be established somewhere where Liberians will be prosecuted. Thank so you. this is the, the one thing that I have to throw in there. Thank you for bringing me on, Mr. Yah. Thank, thank you. Let me take the last call also before you cut me, Mr. Savis. As Dr. Joe Baba. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to, to say that, uh, Mr. Savis, you are not alone. Someone said that you were a lone, you know, fighter, for justice and peace and or for the war crime court. Uh, you and I spoke before personally, and I told you exactly what I could do as a communication expert yes. and as a cultural expert with respect to how we can work together to, to address the issue about the war, war crimes court in Liberia. Unfortunately, you, you haven't, you know, really come forth for us to sit down and, 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 and put a plan of action together. Uh, this area that you have just entered into, I've been in this area for 46 years. And one of the things that I learned is that one man cannot do it alone. And if you say, uh, well, let's work with ordinary uh, citizens, 
The ordinary citizens you want to work with are not educated. You are going to be speaking English to them, and they don't understand English. They don't speak English. They don't write English, etc. So we have to find a suitable means to communicate with them. Again, in this public manner, I'm giving you the opportunity that take the time to call me again so that we can sit and work together to see how we can address this issue. The idea about people thinking that it's impossible for us to, to, to resolve as a people that those who have committed atrocities cannot be brought to justice is something that I refuse to accept. I refuse to accept that. And, 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 and definitely uh, what's going to happen and if we work together is that even those who are in power right now will think that they can play games, that we will definitely go to the people, speak to them in their various uh, uh, languages to let them know that we want them out. We want them out. And those who are even in the house that people have elected, we're going to tell the electorates that if they don't support that war crimes code thing, we are going to vote them out. We have to, we have to use a, 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 a strategy and we've got to be very serious and committed to this thing so that people understand that there's no play play thing. There's no reason why people must kill thousands of people and they're riding the best of cars and, and don't even know the difference between A and Bullfrog and they got the country upside down like they're running some club playing football in the, in the streets of Morovia and all those kinds of things, this kind of stuff has to stop. And all that hypocrisy and stuff that, that, that people are doing down there, you know, it has to stop also. The main thing that I want to also say is that uh, Mrs. Salif, she, she, she please shut up. She should shut up and start putting her mouth in things to cause more confusion in the country. We've had enough of her. If she didn't put Josh, we are there. Josh, we are was not going to be doing the things that he's doing. So she should please shut up. And nobody should give her that, 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 that uh, 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 opportunity for her to be talking all kinds of nonsense to stir up another confusion. Thank she has you. killed enough people. That's, that's enough. Let us stop right there. Thank but uh, uh, again, just to close, uh, Mr. Savage, please contact me. And let's see how we can work together. You got to learn to work with other people in this area. There's nothing that you can do all by yourself. I just want to make that clear to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Sabe, we got other call-up, but respond to a few call-ups before we bring in the next batch. Yeah, let, let, let me first of all thank Mr. Baba. Mr. Baba was right. He contacted us um, about trying to work with us. And, as you are aware, we are in the same group. We are there, you in the group. So hopefully we've been sharing ideas there. We have not seen him for a while. He even made uh, some financial contribution to the group. I, I know he understands the issue even more uh, uh, than many of us who try to articulate it and have the opportunity to uh, be on radio or television and even on Facebook talking about it. If you go on Mr. Baba page, you'll see a lot of advocacy for, for justice and accountability. He believes in it. And uh, we're open to work with uh, any Liberian and Mr. Baba is no exception. Uh, that's why we added him in the group. And we, I'm going to call him after the broadcast and improve my uh, relationship with Mr. Baba. I think we really need him. Uh, let me talk about the first caller. The first caller that called, and um, I, I don't know the name of the individual, I forget. And no, it's a brother, I believe. Jerome Gilman. Jerome Gilman. Uh, uh, Jerome. Uh, uh, before I address Jerome, I want to thank uh, the chairman of the board of Loja, Mr. Dennis Cote, uh, for also propounding that this fight is not Emmanuel Savage's fight, it's a fight of every Liberian and victims. Jerome made something clear that I want to talk about. He said, diaspora Liberians brought the war to Liberia. And nobody should take that for a joke. That's a true statement. The war was supported by a new generation of diaspora Liberian at the time. Now, this generation of diaspora Liberians were the direct victims of the decision made by those who were in the diaspora at the time, the Charles Taylor, the Ellen Johnson Sleeve, and all of the people they control. Now, the same power they had at that time to bring the civil war to change Liberia that today has not changed, is the same power this generation of diaspora Liberians 
That's what we have. We've seen what we've done. We've made, made Ellen Johnson Sully president of Liberia. We made George Weah president of Liberia. We made the law senator of Liberia. Look, we need to come together and fight for justice and accountability. The reason why I blame diaspora Liberians is the fight. Look, look at the politics they don't play on us. And you know, people say, okay, let's get on, let's get rid of George Weah. No matter what, let's get rid of George Weah. That's a, that should be our focus point. And because of that, we say, no matter the law's politics, let's support him. Now, when somebody comes for our support, you know what we need to do? We fix the person in the interest of Liberia. The law does not believe in dual citizenship. He has expressed that all true. We are victims of the civil war. The system says a Nigerian man can come from Nigeria and become something in Liberia and keep his citizenship in Nigeria and be dual and serve in Liberia. But a Liberian born or natural Liberian born cannot serve in Liberia if they take citizenship elsewhere. But guess what? We, we sat there, and I'm not saying the is a bad person. We sat there and thousands of our brothers and sisters by the argument that the law is right. Let's support him. Now, we'll come back later and solve the problem. With pushing holes, and those holes will burst again. Mm. We have the opportunity to fix the law, but people target is on George Weir. Rightly so, the brother is incompetent. We understand that. But are we fixing the system by adding discrimination to the process of what we need in Liberia? If somebody sounds like that to you and you still support them, you know what it shows? It shows upright hate to the incompetent George Minor Weir. And the reason why we know all of this is possible and why we're heading nowhere is because against our own interest, we work for a common cause to remove a president. And that is the target of diaspora Liberians at this moment. Are they gonna succeed? Yes, they will succeed. But they will come back, my brothers and sisters, and believe that the system is yet to be fixed. What I'm saying is, let's get together. Let's fight for what is right. We cannot stay here and thinking that these people are out there fighting for us. They are not. Just yesterday or the day before yesterday, a candidate against a CPP candidate, so is uh, Evan Snow against Sandra Johnson, even though Sally Jones is not a man we're hunting, uh, it's part of the CPP. So you know the, the, the group of CPP candidates and what they look like. I don't have to school anybody about it. Now, the law is now with Mr. Edwin Snow and their internal brother, and you know, the light, oh, the godfather of library politics, uh, Mr. Snow. There's some sort of collaboration going on. What we don't understand is we, we think that these people got ideas based on the fact that they are part of, maybe they are conservative or they're liberals, they are nothing. They got two things in common. You corrupt, you corrupt, no idea. Absolutely none. <laughs> you corrupt, you corrupt. Mr. When it Summer? comes to the war and economic crimes, they pretend like they want it, they don't want it. The Mr. reason Summers? why these people get away with these things is because that's for Liberian refuse to address the fundamental problems in Liberia. Hmm. We have decided let me, let me to bring target. Something, go, go ahead, bring something to go your ahead. attention. River says, ahead. Pro said, Liberians will ridicule you if you criticize DeLong. Go uh, ahead. Well, I, I've worked with DeLong before, and I've seen some outright dishonesty from him. In 2018, I was in Liberia. People want us to support what they support, when in actual reality or in actuality, we have seen and experienced who the person is. I give the law a thousand United States dollars during his first elections that brought him to office based on the fact that he was gonna support war and economic crimes code and support dual citizenship in Liberia. So we meet in the middle somehow. At the end of it all, he supported a bogus dual citizenship that says that you cannot compete for anything in Liberia. All right discrimination and part of what he classified as his reason is because when you steal money, you go on the other side, you won't get it. You, you, you can't get it. You get a man go on the other side, you can't get it. 
I was in Liberia in 2018. I, I printed a t-shirt and talked to Dallas DeLong. I went to him and gave it to him. Please draw up for the rally. DeLong promised. I don't want to tell you what I gave him again after that. DeLong promised that he was going to be there. Two days before the election, I mean, the, the rally, I called DeLong. DeLong said, don't worry, service, I'll be there. A day before the rally, I called DeLong about six, seven times. He didn't answer, returned my call in the evening and said he was in Grand Basel in the meeting. He's going to be there. The day before the, the rally, we appear at a, 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 a center where we talk about elections in Liberia. We talk about everything, including the war and economic crimes code. And he was one of the speakers. Do you think he showed up? No, he never did. Hmm. He let never me, did. Let me bring my two last callers, uh, Mr. Savage. Go ahead, go ahead. Since their time is running out here. Henry Brisbane, if that's the number. Uh, Henry Brisbane, you are live. Uh, Henry Brisbane, that's the name? Yep. Yeah, go ahead, you're live. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you to you guys for bringing me on. I've been following Savi Emmanuel for a couple of time now. And I still get issue with Emmanuel. And the issue I get with Emmanuel is, I asked him the last time, he made some Google prediction before President Weah could take power. He told me President Weah was going to be president. And I believe him. He pushed everybody walk around court. And I had a problem with him. And I asked him, I know he's sitting right in there. I said, I got serious issue when you talk about the war crime code. You're only talking about people that are killed during the civil war. How about my people? The 13 people that were killed on the war, on the pool, and your people were jumping on the street telling us that our people were ruled. How can you solve that, Emmanuel? Because I got my children. I got five kids in America here that are watching you. You're preaching the right war, but you're not singing the, you, you are not singing good song for my kids to get justice for my grandchildren and their children. So Emmanuel, I cannot believe in you. So this is my question to Emmanuel Steve. He had me answer that. I saw the Liberian people. I was scared. I saw the Liberian people jumping on the street and kissing my people to become a role. Mm -hmm. And the kid of 13 people. Yeah. So on the poll, where do you think we're going right now? Hmm. Can you people please yeah. answer that question? Because I'm still hey, I, I, I open I, my eye, I can't see my people. I, I get a video of you people. Yeah, hold on, your hold your on, parents were running on the street. Yeah. M Mr. Brisbane, when you said the Labrum people were jumping in the street, how many? That's a lot. That's a lot. What's saying? Nete Omo Bone Soya? Rock. Okay. So you see that? And you were happy. So now, so where the table stand today? So can you probably so, answer this question? Because I get my kids up to now 25 years, we can't get to, we can't go to that country. Uh, my my thank brother, you. you're pushing a yeah. very good song for everybody. Thank, thank you. Let me bring the last caller or uh, Emmanuel before we okay. the last caller or uh, your name and where you calling from, your number ends nine eight zero six. Oh, this is Ben. I'm calling a Minnesota. How are you? Ben Jonah, we're going doing good. Your your question or comment. Let's talk. Yeah, I want to say I I, I want to first of all say uh, thanks to my you know chairman. He is doing a good job. Now you know the thing. Uh, like just what the, uh, our brother just said, who was just on the line about when where do justice starts from? That has been. That, that, that is the question a lot of people keep asking when you are telling them about war crime code. Oh, should we go back to this year, this year, and that year? When people, it does not matter where we start from. Once we have a beginning, we must have a beginning. That's why it's important. If, if you can join us and, this, and, and, and if this one can be successful, it means that any other crime that we're committed in Liberia, we can go after it as well. But this issue about, oh, 
we we should not start our advocacy from 1989. We should start it from from the rest riot. Guess what? Somebody will come out and say, oh, even we should go to 1847. We need to have a beginning. And that's all we're saying. This okay. is the time that we decide to start from here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Ben, as soon as yeah. you from Sastan, you want us to go back to the Sastan war? <laughs> right, right. I mean, come on, people. We we have to start from justice. somewhere. All, all of those things have happened before in Liberia, but during our generation, we decided that we're going to take this up. So it is upon every Liberian to join us. And once we are successful, I mean, then do I... Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Savage, just wait. Let me just take the last two okay, callers. Ahead, sir. And the go two ahead. callers, please, you have 30 seconds each. Let's start with Willie Delon. Because Willie Delon, and then we'll have Pape Flomo, and then we we'll close the phone lines for the night. Willie, you're live. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Mr. Savage for his efforts. And I think that's a noble cause when it comes to our uh, republic. I mean, um, that's something that's much needed. I always tell people that in our country, I've never seen anyone go to jail for stealing money. And, and some example has to be set. Like you see the, the job, the good job that they're doing in Sierra Leone. Some example has to be set so that uh, once that precedent is set, people will be more afraid to do such a thing. And then uh, that may curtail the corruption in society. My question in this is just, uh, what kind of reception are you getting from the international community? I just, I mean, I know you're going back home and, and you, you're fighting the powers that be, but sometimes I, I also feel that you have to lobby, you know, the powers that be on the international scene to apply pressure on the powers that be in Liberia, like they did to get Taylor out. If you can do that to get the court placed in Liberia. So mm -hmm. just want to know what, the, what is the reception like and also commend you and tell you to please keep continue, continue the fight, okay? Thank you. Papé Flomo, you are our last caller for the night. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Me, uh, I like the the uh, the exuberance and the uh, the uh, the forcefulness, and then the uh, the uh, strength that Emmanuel Savis you know brings to the table with regards to uh, uh, how you call it a uh, war crimes court. But I'll be very honest with you, Mr. Savis, he's fighting a losing battle. I mean, it's 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 tough to say. I mean, people don't hear it, but he's fighting the losing battle, and I'm saying this because of this. The Labrimbo board themselves, they do not have the appetite for war crimes. They, they don't even want war crimes court. Because if they put one the war crimes the war crimes court, they wouldn't have voted for Charles Taylor, then Ellen Johnson Sally, and then all these other people would have voted for Yeke I'm telling you, if Bud Naked was to run for a senatorial position to the or representative position, that may win. Prince Johnson is there. They are always voting for him massively. And the very CPP that he is depending on, because he said he saw Dillon talk to him about war crimes court, the very CPP. The constituent parties within the CPP, they are surrounded with people yeah. who do, do, do not even want who, who do not even want war crimes code. They only say they only lip service. Oh, when we come to power, we bring war crimes code. Georgia does not want to institute war crimes code, but we will do it. It's only palatable to the librarian people so that they can vote for them. So it is a losing battle. Look, there is no way, there is no way these people, except the CPP, there's no way you can depend on them for war crimes code because they are very party. It's flooded with people. Look, so on the Sandra Johnson, I was just beating recently in, uh, in uh, Bomi County. Sandra Johnson, it's only war, war laws. And uh, I, I, Eddie Snow won. And Eddie Snow, the, the very person that won Eddie Snow, he was part of Charles Taylor. He married Charles Taylor's daughter. Why would this one want to interview war council? I mean, I'm sorry to say, he's just fighting the losing battle. It's not going to happen. But I wish him luck, though. Thank you. I, I wish him luck. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Emmanuel, you can begin with the last. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll start with the last caller and then I'll get to the first caller. Last caller thing, we are fighting a losing battle, but I can understand his frustration. You seem like somebody who actually wants justice but don't see the path uh, to justice. What we are starting now is the path to justice. Uh, we wanted to have this advocacy group that would constantly uh, propound the message of justice and accountability because the first thing they want to do is to kill the advocacy. The way to kill it is to get others who believe that government should be run a different way, uh, not placing justice and accountability on the table. We understand that. And we want to continue. That, that's why I volunteer my time to be on radio. I, I may not come on the internet all the time, but I'm on radio Monday, Wednesday, and Friday talking about justice. All of my callers want justice. 
all the calls that call on the man of Saudi show want justice. They cannot put that into the referendum, be picked up, and everybody will put uh, for justice and accountability. I've said to you, my brother, I don't think we're fighting a losing battle. I think we are fighting a good cause. You know, when people look at Facebook and see what is gaining attention, you see shows that shouldn't gain attention, gain attention in Liberia. People lied about people. They, there's even one talk show that said, I raped somebody in Canada, I mean, in Australia, and I was in jail for six months. And the same people come and tell us, say, Joey, I killed my Buddha Yimpa. Uh, these are people just gather and formulate lies and they sell it to people. And the literature buys it and they take it away and uh, it becomes part of people's memories. It tells us the kind of Liberians we have out there. My brother, we're not fighting a losing battle. We're succeeding. And the reason why we know we're succeeding is because today we can talk about it. Today we can, we can talk about the crimes. I can scan on radio and call the Prince Johnson a murderer. I couldn't do it in 1990, 1992. I couldn't do it when Charles Taylor was around because that means you're talking to him when Ellen Johnson Salih came to power. We refer to her as murderer. And you know what is the truth? We are advancing. One day the Liberian people will stand up for themselves. And even if justice is not realized in my lifetime, it is my hope that what we are doing is a foundation for the future. And we're not gonna give up and say, we are frustrated, we are defeated. We need to fight for it, and that's what we need to do. On the first call, uh, my people, your people, and the divisiveness and all that, I know you refer to the Congo and Native. Uh, by the way, you articulate your position, it means that um, you like the Congo people, quote unquote, and then the Native people put the Congo people in the pool and kill the Congo people, and so the Native people are rejoicing, Native people are born. So you see, those are the kind of divisiveness that we need to get rid of. I understand your frustration. Maybe you're not been following the man of service, but I tell you, the tech team men that went on the pool, they need justice. The tech team man, Simon Doe was no saint. He was corrupt. This is a man, look, Dennis Cody put it right. It was the economic crimes that brought the war. These are people who created it. The Ellen Johnson Salif. Somebody posted today on Facebook and said that Ellen administration was better than George Weah administration. Look, they said Ellie met a broken system and fix it. I want to remind them that Ellie didn't come 2005. Ellie came 1990. The system was not the best, but the system was okay for us. If we had left even George, I mean, Simon do as president up to this point, World War would probably be better. That's not what we need. But the truth is, what did they come and fix? They fixed nothing by removing Simon do. Ordinary people were affected. So the whole issue about your people, my people, that is the thing that we need to look at. We look, need to look at the fact that we are all Liberians, no matter what. The discrimination needs to stop. We need to understand that when the war came, Congo people died, Native people died. Whatever people you are, you die in a war. It was a war that affected all of us. Now, when we say justice, we're not saying justice for the light-skinned people or for the dark-skinned people. Justice for those who committed atrocity. We need to look at Ellen Jones Salif and don't make that woman to write the history of Liberia because she is succeeding in her fight for her history that she redeemed Liberia and fight to bring Liberia out of a broken system. When the first line or the headline should be, she broke the system. We're not saying it that, that way. We're looking at like, like everybody who's involved is involved in different uh, affairs and they're going to do whatever they want to do to bring just No. Nobody wants justice in Liberia that is in power. Nobody wants it. They don't want it. They pretend to want it. Now, why do you think that we have all of these people ask them about justice and accountability? They'll tell you, I think it's good for Liberia. I think we should do it. But what is the rule? What, what is the rule now? One of the brothers asked, what are we doing internationally? I think that's great. We have had a communi uh, communication with the RCC. The RCC have told us what they can prosecute and what they can't prosecute. We intended to go to Equas to have these people sue, even in our local government. We had an invitation to go to Switzerland. Because of coronavirus, we got so many issues right now that are stalling the process. The United Nations is not looking back on Liberia. The United Nations wants us to stand up for ourselves, and they'll stand up for us. They cannot understand how we're electing all of these people into power. We need to fight for Liberia in a way in which justice and accountability become a priority. In, in spite of all of this, 
we are sitting fighting for individual power and think that we're going to change Liberia. Look, we fought for George Weir. I remember when Weir was campaigning, and I still remember the famous saying by one Liberian, like George Weir talking about Bo. If Bo can save us, Liberia will be developed today. And, and a, a man stood in the back, and many of you who follow campaign messages said, Joe, we are can't save us all. Well, we are not saving us today. We know why George, we are taking Liberia. Because we refuse to address the economic disparity in Liberia, the wage disparity in Liberia, because we refuse to allow salary to be proportional to the budget. President, we have built complexes, duplexes, mansions. And it's okay because we have refused economic crimes. I'm not defending Simon Dole. Simon Dole is a murderer. I'm not defending anybody in the war. In fact, the AFL was another rebel group. The AFL was another rebel group. But my Thank brother, you, you, you cannot say that native mom, born soldier, native people are saying, so your people that die on the poor or whatever. No, no, no. That, that's, that's, that's not right to say. We are Liberians. The 250,000 that died, they matter to us. Look, Liberians, come on, man, how is time? Native man of Palestine. Everybody, uh, in fact, we got Nigerian all serving, Ghanaian serving in Liberia. We have mixed human beings. We got all kinds of different human beings serving. And we've gotten the same result. Justice and accountability is the beginning of a better Liberia, or unless we realize that we will continue to use Emmanuel Savis, we'll use Dennis Shah, we'll use Anthony C. we'll even use Jesus Christ, and that system will remain broken. Would we'll never Thank be you. able to fix it. And that's what I am pleading to all of you. You don't have to join Loja, but believe in justice, believe in accountability. And, and you know what that means? That means, hey, Bernie Samuka cannot be on a CPP ticket hmm. because that's what justice and accountability mean. But, but you know what? Those words are missing from politicians both because they want him there. You, you support Samuel Johnson and you say you support justice, you support accountability. Thank you, you know, what's the difference between Alex Talo and Sano Josie? Hmm. Maybe you have not read the TRC report, and let me tell you. Imara, can you hold on a little bit? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Dennis, I'm breaking protocol here. We have a caller that has been making effort for some reason. They couldn't get through. Uh, caller, if you can hear me uh, quickly to the issue. You have one minute. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Josiah Jokai. I'm calling you from the American Etiquette. And I just wanted to quickly say that I've been following Emmanuel Savez very well in his fight for the establishment of war and economic crimes code in Liberia. Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, almost all the things that he says and, and does. Uh, you know, there's no way we can evade uh, justice uh, and, and then um, expect to have genuine reconciliation and development in our country following uh, the mayhem we experienced, the war, the destruction, the murder and everything uh, but this is the issue there's no way Emmanuel can succeed you know I mean his institution uh, without taking leadership on this issue there is no concerted national effort we, we don't have the amalgamation of institutions uh, with the interests uh, for the establishment of such courts so if Emmanuel can take leadership on this issue firstly bring together institutions that are interested in bringing justice following the crisis in our country bring them together in a diaspora uh, ensure that there is a leadership instituted to take this on and then such conglomeration of organizations can work with the institutions, the interest groups on the ground in the country, bring them together to pursue this uh, critical national cause. Uh, he, he can't just succeed the way he's proceeding. He will create awareness, he will sensitize uh, certain people, he will reach out to certain segments of our society, but it is not going to make the kind of impact that is required because of the different political interests. The people, many of the people who are subject of uh, this prosecution are people who are in national leadership. And there is no way that we can be taking up issues with them in the Individually, and then want to look in their classes, their skeleton and everything as institutions, as individuals, and then we succeed in making sure that the code is established. What we need to do is ignore what they're doing 
and then focus on having a concerted effort, a common firm to pursue this thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a mobilization in place, like the way you have political movement in the country, like the current experiment that I call the Delon experiment, which has emerged in recent time, if you want to bring together institutions that will generate that kind of interest, that kind of impression, uh, to pursue the issue of establishing one economic crime school, then we can all succeed. Thank you. There are people around. Some of us are interested in working on this, but somebody like him has to take leadership on this. So he needs to go back to the drawing board, forget about the current strategy, go back and develop a new strategy that should focus on bringing institutions and individuals of like minds together. Thank you. To pursue this thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right, Imara, you just listened to the caller there. Uh, people are demanding more leadership. Uh, it seems to be uh, some people don't see that much from you yet. Uh, I, 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 I'm like, you, you, you are out of breath yet. <laughs> I, I know, and, and Josiah, I got a lot of respect for Josiah. I mean, he's a distinguished mm -hmm. Liberian. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's nothing you do that you don't get criticism. I've done a lot on my own for justice and accountability. I've spent my family money. You know, I've bought radio stations equipment to be able to sell the message to Liberians. You, 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 have you heard about Punch FM not getting uh, their frequency? No, I'm just hearing this. You, no, you, they, 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 they did not give them the frequency. You, you heard about that? Well, that's with, uh, uh, what's the brother name in Liberia there? Uh, oh, you're talking about uh, Patrick Hanna? Yeah, 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 I know. You, you see advocates on Facebook that he's not getting his frequency, right? Yes. Have you ever heard LTC Live? Liberia, uh, LTC. You know what LTC is, right? No, it's, no. It's I, what I... it was before the Manu Sabe show. So we applied for a permit. We sent radio equipment to Liberia. My money, I spent 39,000 United States dollars to send those equipment. One of the equipment now is with uh, Hot FM. That's how we're able to broadcast as far as Nima and Lofa uh, because of my effort. You don't hear anybody on the internet fighting for our permit, but the fight for Patrick Hona. And Patrick Hona is a brother. He's very distinguished as well. You know, but I'm just telling you, many people are just interested in the politics. They don't see our efforts. I come Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to talk about Justin's accountability. I talk about Loja. I talk about people coming on board, go on our website. I, I, we, we offer partnership. Nobody sees that. Nobody sees the effort. I'm a working man too. I got kids. We are victims. Now, if you're going to criticize my effort, then you better criticize it in a way where I feel like something needs to be done. Like what more leadership should we take? I'm only one person. We fight with Loja, we brought other people on board, like jo uh, Ben Jonah, like Mr. Koti, like S.B. Don Wallace, Kelvin, even you, Mr. C. And, and, and Dennis Jai, you guys are contributor, not just financially, but also to educating the minds of Liberian while we need justice. We want to work with other organizations like the Movement of Justice, the Coalition for Justice, and any justice group in Liberia, and Josiah Joka can come on board and be one of the leaders, even not for Loja, but for his organization, it's, I don't know every Liberian out there. All I see is politics. That's all I see. And so I'm not saying that we are perfect. I'm not saying that we're doing everything right. But if you're out there and you're Liberians and you don't understand how frustrating it is that these guys have created a stumbling block, that even advocates are better for Liberia cannot penetrate because that's the way to set up the system. There's one thing I want to remind every Liberian listening to us. In politics, there's something called timing. The timing is not wrong for the advocacy. The timing is right. We continue this advocacy by giving respect to those who started it before. Today, we are continuing. But I'll say to you, when the time is right, people will hear the message, even if we don't speak it. Okay. And that is where we are with our advocacy. That is how we're gonna work with ordinary people we're going to focus our attention on collaborating with those who want justice and accountability. And we believe at the end of it all, we are going to be able to show people that you're a victim. 
And because we just came from the wall, people believe that elections will solve Liberia problem. Wait and see. That's what I said. I can't wait for the CPP to take over. I just want 2023 to come. I want these guys to take over. Put your senator into place, your vice president, your everything. And we evaluate your government after two, three years. And then you will come back and say, Loja was right. Emmanuel Sabas was right. FOL was right. Dennis Ja, Anthony Sia was right. That justice and accountability is what we need. But please, my brother, don't put down our effort because sometimes we don't even go to work to do this. Sometimes, we, like March is coming, I'm going back to Liberia. I've never been able to collect more than $2,000 from the diaspora and community to, to go and fight for justice, to rally for justice. I've never been able to do that. My plane ticket alone is around $2,400. Not to mention I got a colleague with me, Kelvin, that traveled too. Where we stay costs us money. To print t-shirts costs us money. And now, we put about 5,000 people in the street the first time. We worked so hard to let people know that justice is important. We did it with all Yeke Koloba, Darius DeLong. We did it with all Sano Johnson, the CP. We just need these people. And then when I came back to Canada, guess what? They said, but I come in supporting the man. I come in. You know what I come in? And it was all on the internet. And after our efforts, we still cannot, somebody can say, this guy is doing well. Loja is doing well. Everybody advocating for war and economic crime school is doing well. People still find a means to, to criticize us. But I, I don't take this personal because Josiah, right. like I said, he's a distinguished Liberian. Mm -hmm. I respect him very much. I believe Loja is open. Uh, we're going to continue to work with people who want justice and accountability. And we're going to continue to tell people that if you don't prioritize that, consider the Liberia you have, what you're going to have. And that is what it's going to be. And I'm glad that we're able to send this message out on this enviable platform. I want to thank you very much, guys. I appreciate everything that you've done for us for justice and accountability. Thank you so much. Mr. Emmanuel Savez, uh, your advocacy is highly distinguished among all other advocacy. Um, I'm not saying it lightly. And even those who disagree with you, respect you for your advocacy. Uh, you are one of the few Liberians who has demonstrated true advocacy. Uh, we see people holding onto their political side and would not dare open their mouth to criticize that side because of politics. But for you, it's different. When you see the need to throw that punch, you will throw it because you want one thing, justice, and maybe two things, justice and accountability. Because you believe that when we get those two things, the Liberia we want that Dennis Jack called the glorious land of liberty yeah. shall be ours. Until then, folks in cyberspace, we will beg your indulgence to conclude this broadcast here at Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We have a son, and that son says we are all Liberians. Whether or not you support Loja, or whether or not you support justice and accountability, you are still a Liberian. And when that dread neck of justice is coming, beware, it will drag you to the dungeon of justice. And there, we all will celebrate the justice we all need. For we need this justice, and if we do not have the justice, you will see the killings will continue to go on, as in the case of the auditors. Do you want me to continue? No. Listen to that song. It says, we are all Liberians. Maybe it will remind you that that country was a little bit peaceful until the guns started firing. I don't want to make Dennis Jack cry yet. So folks, bye-bye. My name is Anthony C. Uh, Emmanuel Savage, thank you. Let's do the quiet too often here. This message will go forth. We need justice and we need it now. Thank you, folks, and bye bye. We all have you